How's it going, everybody? We're here with Chris Bartle from Bartle Strength and Conditioning. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hello. How you doing? I'm dandy. Oh, Chris is dandy. Dandy. And we hope you're all dandy, too. Like candy. Hell, oh, like candy. Okay, Chris, so what do you got going on for us today other than candy? Candy, dandy, shoulder stuff. We're going to do, uh, uh, I'm going to have Jesse demonstrate another shoulder exercise. This is one that I like to uh, um, have clients do in between any sort of chest pressing exercise. Um, to keep balance in the body, it's always nice if you're going to do any sort of front pushing exercise, always do some sort of pulling exercise to keep a balance, okay? So as a filler, so uh, in between, while someone's resting, I like to have them do stuff, so they're always continually moving. What we're going to work on today is what's called a banded face pull, okay? It's exactly what it seems. We got our, our mini band from EliteFTS.com. And um, I'm going to teach Jesse how to go ahead and do a face pull. You can do this a couple ways. Um, I like to have people start with it at an elevated uh, position versus uh, straight down. For me, it's a little bit easier to get them to understand um, how to move their shoulders in the right way. Okay. So we're going to break this down into four parts, and I'm going to explain each part. So Jesse, go ahead and grab the bands okay, with your hands, and then take a little step back. So there's a little bit of tension on your bands. Let your hands and arms come all the way extended. Okay, so with this four part movement, a couple of things that we talked about in the last shoulder uh, installment was people wanting to elevate the shoulders. And here's why I always have break this down into four parts. The first part, all I want you to do is squeeze your lats and tuck the shoulders down. Okay, now he's in a good position. Your next movement is gonna be the actual face pull, okay? So you're gonna pull the, your hands right towards your chin and spread your hands apart as you get close to your chin. Keep on, squeeze out, really squeeze all the way back. Okay, now there's part number two. Part number three is extending the arms back, still keeping the shoulders down, pulled down. Okay, arms are extended, and now let the shoulders raise up. Okay, so that's how we do it. It's a four part movement. Now, what I want to see Jesse do on this next one is keep the elbows a little bit higher. Okay, so let's turn the palms down. Okay, go ahead and do step number one, pull down. Step number two, squeeze, nice and quick. Pull back with the elbows, okay? So his elbows are here. What I wanna see is the elbows up here. Because again, we're trying to work this upper posterior chain here, upper shoulders and the upper back, okay? Number three, arms straight out. Number four, let the shoulders relax, okay? And then let's go again, okay? But let's go a little bit quicker. So there's one, two, three, four. Good, one, oh, one, there you go, so one, two, three, four, good. So you can see if you break it down into simple parts, into four easy steps, you can make sure that your shoulders are in a good spot every single time, you're engaging the lats, you're taking your traps out of it, and you can go ahead and get your shoulders warmed up. I like to have people start with the bands first because the bands provide a progressive and regressive assistance versus straight weight. Straight weight, people wanna get a little too aggressive. Bands are a good way to do it. It's just easier to teach that way. You can use light bands. You can use uh, mini bands like this. Remember, the different thickness of the band will give you different resistance. Always start lighter, higher reps. You can start with a sets of 15 to 20, and as you progressively get stronger, you can move up into heavier bands, and you can do sets of anywhere from 8 to 10. So would you do this? You would do this as a heavy eight to ten set, right? You, you no, would. it depends on what we're doing. If we're doing a, if I'm having a client do a really heavy chest day where there's a lot of heavy bench pressing or heavy dumbbells, I'm going to keep the reps lighter. Okay. Um, because of the strain that the pressing is putting on the shoulders, all we're trying to do is keep balance. Okay. So I like to go a little bit higher rep. If it's a higher rep chest day where we're using lighter weights. Uh, and higher reps, then I can go with a little bit thicker band and I can bring the rep range down into that eight to 10 range. Okay, gotcha. And then when you say balance, so is this to keep basically this from happening, right? Is that what you mean? You to, yeah, that, that, to get the, get the, well, you see so many guys in the gym where they, they get so overdeveloped in their chest yeah. that they walk around like this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that, that's definitely one reason. Every time you do a pushing motion, your shoulders are going to want to come forward and, a coat, and of course it gives you that hunchback or that slouch position because your chest muscles get just get so tight. But besides the chest muscles getting tight, what happens is, is they don't forget about the balance of building the upper back muscles. So anytime you get a chance to have somebody pull, okay, it's going to help build and strengthen those erector muscles so they won't want to slouch, their shoulders will be backed, and you'll see an increase of posture. You'll see a better posture over time 
because every time you pull, you're going to bring that chest up into a more natural position. Absolutely. Um, so it does help prevent with the slouch, but then it's just also every time you do something with the shoulders in the front, you always want to do something with the shoulders in the back. It's just about keeping body balance. And I think that's a great rule of thumb and one we forget all the time is, you know, we're so used to using everything in front of us because mm -hmm. we're visual, right? that we forget we have all these muscles. Some of our biggest muscle groups are all behind us. Mm -hmm. And if we don't learn how to engage them, I really believe that a lot of things, shoulder problems, knee problems and stuff, would be avoided if we learn to balance and use the muscles that we don't see. Yep, and a lot of times when I have people come in and say they, they have shoulder problems or shoulder, shoulder issues, I'll, I'll even bump that ratio up to a three to one ratio, three back or posterior exercises to every chest exercise, just because almost in 10 out of 10 times, they're going to have poor posture, they're going to have poor yeah. back muscles, so you got to build those up first before you can even get to the chest, because if you, you, you fix a broken house, the house is still going to be broke. Yep. Awesome, Chris. That was great. Thank Thanks. you.